Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is actually my first video. I've only recently set up this YouTube channel. The main reason I've done it is I thought it would be really nice to have a space where sales or recruitment professionals could come and access free tips, advice, and just a space really to show that there's other people that are kind of experiencing the same challenges as them as well. I will be posting regular content on here, obviously different subjects every time. And please feel free to comment if there's any subjects you'd like me to cover off in any of the videos. Today, I wanted to cover off a hot topic at the moment, especially prevalent because of the pandemic, which is working from home. I've recognised from speaking to clients of mine and contacts in the industry that for sales professionals and people in recruitment, it's really been a challenge. It's been very tough, purely because prior to the pandemic, we were either working out in the fields, we were on the road every day with the freedom to travel, or in recruitment, a lot of the time people were working from an office. To go from that environment or field based to then purely based from home within the space of 24 hours has been really, really tough for people. I've worked from home for a long time, coming up to seven years, but I still vividly remember what it was like to go through adapting to doing that. So I thought it'd be a good topic for today's video and I will be posting some blogs on my website soon as well and my LinkedIn about this subject also. So please feel free to follow me and that may help you as well. So how did I get into working from home? I had been in an office-based recruitment job. Prior to that, I'd worked in sales in an office. So I was very, very familiar with an office-based environment, lots of people working around me, my manager on hand, what, what a lot of people are used to basically. I made a move into a different recruitment job where it was purely working from home and I had some field-based work as well, which initially I thought, wow, this is gonna be amazing. I can work at home in my pajamas. I can manage my own diary. It's gonna be great. I don't have to go to an office every day. I don't have to commute. So I was very much looking at it through rose tinted glasses. I was quite young at the time, I was either 23 or 24, and I didn't have the facilities to work from my own property because I was in an apartment, so I had to work from my parents. And it was really, really tough. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I took to it like a duck to water because I didn't at all. It was a shock. I didn't have much uh, training initially around how to work from home. I was left to my own devices and I just had to get on with it. I really struggled with some of the topics that I'm gonna talk about today. I wanna to go through what I've learned and taken from those experiences because I ended up being very successful working from home and it's something I'm used to now, but for a lot of people, it's still a challenge. Let's be honest, the pandemic has shown a lot of employers that working from home is sustainable and it's a benefit to the business. It's not gonna go away. I think a lot of people are gonna experience hybrid working from now on. So you've got to be able to adapt. It's probably never gonna go back to full field-based or full office space. So it's time to grow within your role, learn how to adapt and be just as successful as you were before. So what have I learned? I think one of the things that I wish I had done when I started working from home is sat down and taken the time to evaluate, okay, what are my strengths in this situation? What are my weaknesses? Almost a SWOT analysis. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the SWOT analysis. So we're looking at our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats in regards to a certain topic. At the time, going back all those years ago, my strengths were my drive, my motivation, my work ethic. I was really determined to succeed. I had a lot of focus, a lot of determination. My weaknesses were I wasn't great at work-life balance. When I was working in an office, I wasn't great at taking breaks. I didn't want to leave work. So I should have evaluated at the time that working from home with my office or my work stuff so close to me, that might be also a threat as well, that I might work too much. If you're not familiar with the SWOT analysis, if you Google it and go on Google Images, there's loads of templates you can use. So that's something in hindsight I wish I'd done so I could really hone in on the weaknesses and the threats, work on those and grow out of them and really hone in on the opportunities and the strengths to make me successful. One of the biggest things I think I learned was routine and I managed to get some sort of routine in quite quickly because I enjoy it, I like it. If you're somebody that maybe enjoyed the commute to work, you enjoyed getting up at the same time, getting ready, going to work, you had your little routine going, there's no reason why you can't implement that at home. Get up at the same time, 
always get dressed. I always find the days where I'm wearing my joggers or I haven't really made as much of an effort to get ready, there's something about how I feel that day that's different to the days where, like today, I've put a pair of normal trousers on. Don't think, oh, I'm just gonna stay in my pajamas. Get your brain in the mindset of I am working. Get up at the same time, get dressed. If you do feel like sometimes you're finding it hard to get focused on work and get motivated, use that time that you would normally commute to work or drive to your first me meeting and do something that's going to help you go for a walk, do an exercise routine, maybe read a book, but use that time to get focused for work. So routine in the morning, really, really important. You don't have to take your lunch break at the same time every day, but make sure that you stop for lunch. So you've got that middle of the day time where you're refueling and you're giving your mind a break. Have a time where you're going to finish at the, at the end of the day. Create a routine where you've got slots in your diary of what you're going to do in each slot. Just so you've got some momentum throughout the day. You, you've got things to keep you going. It doesn't just feel like you're f coasting through the day. There needs to be a proper flow of work, basically, to keep you going. Also, what I learned the hard way, I have to say, is work-life balance is so, so important. When people say, oh, the more hours you work, the more money you'll make, or the more successful you'll be, that's not true. I've learned that. And it took me a long, long time to learn that, a very, very long time. I remember probably about four years ago, some days I was working something stupid like 7am till 9 o'clock at night with very limited breaks. I burnt out, my productivity dropped, I wasn't very well, I made myself ill because of it. I realised that I didn't need to work like that, I needed to work smarter. You'll have a better quality of work, you'll be more productive and your team will look on you as being a role model and that can end up with things like uh, promotions and more responsibility at work. I would say this one thing that's really important is your working environment. Now, not everybody has the luxury of being able to have an office. I've got one and it's been the, really, really helpful because I can close the door at the end of the day or go out of the room for a break and nothing is in my eyesight that reminds me of work. So I can switch off a lot easier. Yes, okay, it's a room in my house. I could come in here when I want and work. But there's something about closing that door at the end of the day that makes me switch off. If you haven't got an office, that's fine. There's other ways that you can switch off from work. Little things like don't leave your laptop in sight. At the end of the day, close it down, hide it, put it away in a cupboard just so you can't see it. Also, make sure that you're somewhere working where you're comfortable. Don't perch at the end of your bed. You know, make sure maybe you're at your kitchen table or you're somewhere where you're comfortable where you're going to be able to sit properly, you've got your laptop placed on a desk, you're able to have a drink by you, you can have some papers, you can make notes, you're somewhere where you've got everything you need around you and you're comfortable. At the end of the day, put everything away. I know it can be a bit of a faff, but the more everything is in sight, the more likely you're going to be thinking about work and be tempted to work as well. I found for work-life balance, what's really important is actually getting out the house. Now, I enjoy exercise. It's a massive release for me. Sometimes doing a workout in the middle of the day or going for a really nice walk on my lunch really, really helps me keep that balance within my mind. It really creates positive mental health behaviours. It's not going to be for everybody, but it might be something you want to incorporate as well. Teamwork is actually just as important as it would be if you were in the office. This is something that is massively underrated in sales and recruitment. I think everyone feels like they're just out for themselves, they've got their own targets, and that can sometimes be bred into the culture of where you work. In terms of working from home, it's really important to keep in touch with the people around you because you're there to support each other. You're still a team. Just because you're working from home, it does not mean that you are alone. If you're having a bad day, pick up the phone and ring a colleague. Same as if you're having a good day. Share your experiences, share best practice. Your manager is somebody I would keep in touch with as well. If you're struggling with something, the only way you're going to get help with it is if people know about it. And you can feel very lonely when you're working from home, especially if you're used to having all your team sitting next to you in an office. They're still there. So use the resources that you've got, things like Teams, Zoom, for your phone, give them a call. Just make sure that you're speaking to people because that will make you feel a lot better. And lastly, 
customer relationships. Working from home, you still need to be speaking to your customers. I keep hearing it from people that they're emailing a lot or they're maybe LinkedIn messaging people. That can play a part sometimes, but ultimately we all know that people buy from people and our personality can come across a lot better and we can be more likable when we're speaking to somebody. If you're in an account management role, you need to keep up those relationships. And if you're working in a role where business development is a big focus, it's much easier to build relationships with people when you're speaking to them, either over something virtual like Teams or if you've got them on the phone. Still value that contact. Ultimately, it's going to make you feel better because you're speaking to more people. Just because they're our customers or our potential clients, it doesn't mean that they're not having the same struggles as us working from home and going through the pandemic so you taking the time to invest in that relationship and pick up the phone may actually benefit your um client base because you're showing that appreciation you're adding value to them there are just a few tips around working from home as i said keep an eye on my website and my linkedin i will be posting blogs on this and if there's any other subjects you'd like me to cover off on this channel feel free to comment and i can take them into consideration as well I hope you all have a great week and I will speak to you all soon.